Okay, after a short meeting with myself, <laughs> I decided that I want to install the ceiling block in the front and uh, rear seal housing, this one, so I can uh, finish the bottom end. Of course, we have to install the oil pump too, and then we can install the sump so we can close the bottom part of the engine. However, with this engine stand, this is not going to work. On my engine stand at work, I was able to squeeze the housing there but here the bolt at least this bolt is on my way i thought of maybe clamping this here and removing that bolt but again i can't remove it because it is gonna hit the crank here so unfortunately i'm gonna have to remove the engine from the stand temporarily i can't leave it for the end because i can't install the thump without this steel housing because it's part of the gasket here it needs to finish the circuit here and the ceiling block needs to finish the circuit there so we can install the gasket and the oil sump. So unfortunately we're gonna have to remove it from the stand and uh, then put it back again. And for that we're gonna have to come up with a smart solution. Don't judge me too bad, it's not so bad. So we're gonna clean this surface, we're gonna change the seal and we're gonna install it quickly. See this face this is my disappointed face because i just realized that i have a big problem i have the head gasket set but somehow i don't have the bottom gasket set and that's a big problem and i just went through the entire order here nope it wasn't delivered so i went on the website and checked there and it turns out that the bottom end gasket sets are being back ordered but here in the invoice it didn't say that it was back ordered so so unfortunately i don't have the gasket set so i need to source one very quickly because i need to finish this engine as soon as possible okay i called two places one doesn't have it the second one they said that they're gonna call me back soon so Fingers crossed that they're gonna have it and I need to go pick it up. It's like 50 kilometers away, but I'm gonna have to drive there. I have no other choice. Hopefully they have it. But you know what, while we're waiting, we're gonna check the oil pump. And this oil pump actually had a pretty good pressure. So I'm not doubting it at all, but we're gonna check it just in case. So we have the body, we have an outer rotor and we have an inner rotor that goes inside. I'm not going to explain how it works. I explained it many times in my previous videos and I'm sure that you guys know. So there are three measurements here that are important. One is between the body and the outer rotor. That needs to be maximum 10 tau. Between 1 and 10 tau. So I'm going to try with 10 even though I can see already that this is there's no chance that that's going to fit there. So I'm going to try with five. This is five. Even five doesn't fit. So, okay, that's that fits well. That's four tau. Okay, so four tau is good. The other measurement that we need to measure is between the outer rotor and the inner rotor in this position. So here we need to have around four tau. Do you see like that? Yeah. Okay. So now, again, I have the four tau leaf. 
and that's pretty tight. Let me try with five. Yeah, five is very tight. It fits if I force it, but uh, it's too tight. So that's good. And the last measurement is at the top. It needs to be maximum four tau. And four tau doesn't fit at all. So it fits here in the hole. <laughs> yeah. Good. So we have perfect measurements here. And that's, that was expected based on the oil pressure that it was building up. So this is good to go when we are ready for it. Okay, another little project that we can tackle while waiting for the phone call is the rocker shaft. Every time I rebuild an engine, I started changing this because the oil delivery is not very well designed for this. The oil comes only from the rear rocker here. That's all the way at the back of the engine. That's the only oil passage that delivers oil to the rocker shaft. And what happens is it delivers it to the to a little hole on the shaft and the shaft is hollow let me open the new one so this is the screw hole here for this screw and right at the bottom here there's the oil delivery hole so this hole needs to match this hole here and then oil goes inside the shaft which is hollow and then it has little holes here all over the place that deliver oil to each and every rocker but all the way to the front of the shaft sometimes it doesn't even reach because when when there's not enough oil pressure the front of the shaft suffers for oil so the shaft is not that expensive it's i i think it's 19 dollars or something like that so i just change it every time i rebuild an engine i'm sure the engine is going to be happy about that so for this reason this screw here is very important it needs to be always in place. Sometimes it vibrates itself loose. The shaft might turn a little bit. The hole on the pedestal doesn't match the hole on the shaft. And then oil doesn't get delivered anywhere. So that's why when we install this screw back, we need to put thread lock on it to make sure that it is uh, staying in place. So we're going to try to remove this. I know that the pedestals get really stuck sometimes there, but we're going to have to... Uh, force them out and as I'm removing parts I'm gonna put them on this tube that I have so they don't get misordered I want to keep them in the same order I can uh, figure it out if I misplace them but I'd rather be safe than sorry okay this one actually comes out easy okay, so we're gonna put it at this end of the shaft I'm actually going to put something here to close it. Okay, that's going to keep it from coming out. And now this, oh, okay. I'm going to start pulling them out one by one and putting them in the same direction. Since the other ones are turning, you know what? I'm going to start from the other end of the shaft now. And since I'm going to start from the other end, I'm going to have to have another storage shaft. Here on this side, we have a split pin, a cutter pin. Let's see if they're going to move this way now. Okay. It goes this way, so... Okay, let's transfer them all to one now. Okay. 
that's bad. The scoring here. Basically, each and every one is scored. Now, we're gonna start cleaning the pedestals so they can slide easily on the new shaft. Because I'm sure they're not gonna slide easy. So, I'm gonna take a piece of sandpaper and we're gonna roll it. I'm gonna chuck it as a drill, drill bit. Yes. Should be enough. Let's see. So now we match the hole. I'm going to put the screw here just to hold it in place but we're gonna come back and we're gonna put thread lock in it thread lock on the threads now i'm gonna lubricate the whole entire shaft and we can start moving these parts later and I'm ready with the shaft replaced and everything but I still don't have the coal so I'm gonna just put thread lock here and I'm gonna go again I think they forgot me <coughs> okay another little project done Okay, turns out they have it, so I'm gonna go pick it up. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a long drive because I thought it was like 50 kilometers, but it is 90 from here. So it is what it is. We're gonna lose two, three hours to go there and back. It's Friday afternoon and, and it's a long weekend. So people are gonna start driving up and down. It's gonna be crazy traffic, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm waiting for my special transport to arrive so I can go and pick them up. Well, my Uber has arrived and we are on our way to the parts store so we can... I thought we were going to Niagara Falls. Oh, Niagara Falls? Yeah, <laughs> that's what you told me. Okay, to the casino. That's where he wants to go. The casino would be good. I can win some money and buy another car. Or lose or, what you have. Or win a car. <laughs> or lose what you have. That's true. More likely. Okay, we are okay, on our way. All right, so three and a half hours and what is it like 45 bucks later, we are back in business. Good thing that David needed to go in the same area as well. So we kept each other company. It wasn't a boring drive, but oh, the traffic was, eh, it wasn't too bad. But anyways, let's get back to work. This is what we are after. And this time, this one, so this set comes with the wooden box still, not rubber. I like that better. It's easier to install. Okay, 
so they have to match the shape of the block because if you put them this way they won't work so that's how they go and this one comes like this so when you flip them they're gonna come like this I'm just gonna put them in the right orientation so I don't mix them up I'm also gonna put gasket maker here on this side and this side and on the ceiling block everywhere here and here and it looks like these screws don't have lock washers I just looked them up in the schematics and I don't know why but there's no washers here Now here it is important to line up perfectly flush the front end of the block with the ceiling block because otherwise your front engine plate is not going to seal properly so we're going to cut them to the to size somewhere there so i gave it just a little bit of paper here at the beginning to start and now uh, Perfect. My exacto knife is not the sharpest. And be careful not to drop this inside the engine, right? There you go. Okay. Right behind you. So that's done as well. Good. Now we can actually install the oil pump and we can close the bottom end so here on the tr4 engines and tr3 and two tr2 there's the gasket for this engine though it doesn't come with a gasket so i put gasket maker there just in case now last time on the other engine i forgot to put uh, assembly lube so this time i'm gonna put So I believe we are ready to put the gasket on and the oil sand. Okay, time to close it up. So the torque here is 20 foot pounds and to be honest normally here i trust my calibrated elbow elbow but here this time i'm gonna torque them okay And the gasket for the front engine plate again like last time if you've watched my video there's two different gaskets in the set and i don't know why but the holes don't match so obviously there are two different blocks i never knew that so we're gonna find the one that we're gonna use the one that matches our block of course 
like this is the one because this one wouldn't fit you see this one doesn't fit Next, we should install the two sprockets, crankshaft, camshaft, and chain. This is gonna go easy. Sometimes it goes easy, sometimes it gives me troubles. So here this sprocket has a chamfered edge and this is what goes towards the crank because here the crank is not machined square. It has a rounded edge there. So that's why it has, that's why the sprocket has a chamfer to make sure that it goes all the way in. Also here we have those spacers. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's none. So I'm just gonna try it with the old spacer. We will check the alignment and if it needs more or less, we're gonna change for now i'm just gonna put it on like this we're gonna tap it gently wow so that's all the way in with the old spacer then this sprocket goes with the deeper end first the shallower stays out. I'm gonna put the screws without the tap washer. There's a tap washer for here, but we're gonna put it at the end after we do the timing. So now if we put the straight edge from this teeth to this teeth, we need to make sure that it touches everywhere. But what happens here, is it is rocking so this is the highest spot spot here and it's rocking and try and turn it just in case it shouldn't make a difference yeah it doesn't so this means that this sprocket needs to come out a little bit so we're gonna put more spacers well, i have two spacers for here i have a six tau and four tau i believe Yeah, with the four tau spacer, it's perfect. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna put the four tau spacer there. Okay, so that's really weird. Well, this shim took the shape of this, so but the new ones come flat, so I hope that this will take also that shape because you see now it's sitting out. So let's see if that's gonna work. taking the shape so it's made it's made so it takes the shape okay oh I can't test it now because it's springy but we determined before that it was four tau that it needed so that's how we're gonna leave it so let me install the chain and it's time for timing <laughs> it's timing time no actually we're not gonna have time for timing in this video so we're gonna leave it for the next time so stay tuned and in the next episode we're gonna continue from here so thanks for watching guys as usual thanks for commenting and subscribing and i'll see you soon bye